Theo is going to talk about the REST API. Uh, basically a secret weapon. So here you go. Yeah, welcome to my, uh, to my talk about the WordPress uh, REST API, the secret weapon. Um, as you can see here in the, in the first slide, it's already there seven years in WordPress. And the most people I met didn't even know what it is. So you, um, you can be very uh, curious what's happening now. So um, I have here one, um, the, first, uh, the first slide with the points today. It's about me, it's what's the WordPress REST API, why is it there, why is it important, why is it the most secret weapon in web development. And we have some example use cases. Very shortly, it's more like a joke or something, but you will see what happened. Um, by the way, if you're checking out Twitter, you will find every minute one tweet wide in a moment with uh, some AI picture of the WC, of the WCCH. So whatever you see there, it's all generated by WordPress REST API. So about me, I'm a WordPress develop in WordPress development since 2009. Uh, was a long journey. Uh, exactly today, I uh, submitted my first plugin to WordPress or .org. Ten years. Um, I've got a master in business informatics in Berlin, um, and worked five years as WordPress developer in Winterthur. Um, it was a little bit stressful, as you all know. As WordPress developer, you have sometimes too much stress, and so I decided to. Uh, go into the education and uh, since three years exactly from today I'm doing education in IT on uh, application development is it called. Um, that's all about me. The, the, the company is called Twofold Academy. It's, a, it's like a, say working with, our, with um, autism, with, with young people with autism. It's a little bit complicated to, uh, um, to explain, but you can uh, later ask me if you want. So we're going uh, further in the next um, thing. What is the WordPress REST API? Who of you is using the WordPress REST API for something? OK, it's less than a half, of course, <laughs> somewhere. So. Um, who of you is also aware of what REST is? Okay, this is more than a half, a little bit. Okay, interesting. Because um, the re who don't know everything about REST? Who don't know anything about REST, okay? Good. So, um, what is REST? REST is a represental state transfer and is the main, the main uh, communication between computers and the World Wide Web. You don't see them. They're all working somewhere on the servers and you don't, you don't ever see them. By the way, Google is getting so rich because of a lot of REST things and Amazon as well. Um, Amazon was one of the first adapters of RESTful architectures and so they got so incredible rich just because of REST APIs. Um, the REST API of WordPress is a collection of roots and endpoints. What is a root? A root is something like you have an address, a, a specific U, URI, where you can reach some resources. And the endpoint is also is merely the same way you can um, do questions on this root. So something like you want to get something from the, uh, from the WordPress, you can get it through the, through the endpoint. Um, 
It's in the core of WordPress. It's already there. You, um, you don't have to install it anymore. In, a, um, in former times, you need, needed the plugin, which had uh, this kind of logo. But this plugin is away because it's in the core right now. Um, yeah, and it's running all the time, and it's open by default. You have to be very careful because it exposes all your data you have in your WordPress through the REST API. Um, I, I think every, of, every one of you has got a WordPress block. So you really have to check this out. This is my last point here. My, uh, check it on your WordPress slash VP WP minus JSON and look what you can see there if you give it on your WordPress inside the, uh, in, a, in any web browser. Doesn't matter what you take. You will see a JSON where all your data is shown. And so you really have to be careful what is inside this. Because you can, can imagine if your whole WordPress is open, what, what could be, what possibly could go, could go wrong. So, um, then we uh, hear the root is a pattern how to find a way in the web so you can find everything through the root on the WordPress about the WordPress itself, what's in there. And you have to be aware that every plugin you have also you, uh, takes advantage of the REST API so you can find all plugins through the REST API in most cases, unless they are protected somehow. Um, as I said, you can, you can uh, really check this on your own blog with slash wp minus json, as that you can see this. Um, it's there since WordPress 4.7, which is now seven years, 2016, and the web, the whole WordPress web, 43% of the world right now, is completely open data. So, you really have to uh, think about this. If, if, if your WordPress is not open data, you really have to be careful what is exposing there. So, um, then I often get asked, why is it there? And I have some assumptions but I'm not sure if some of them are facts as well. Um, the first assumption is they want to try to modernize WordPress. Everybody of us knows that WordPress is a big PHP monster which has thousands of functions and you can do whatever and some functions are not documented well and so on. So they want to modernize it in a way that they only have a JSON API for the content. Um, there was also in mind, I think I have this here somewhere. No, it's not here. Okay. Um, so when it is a JSON API of the WordPress, there is some other way to show your WordPress website than just the old PHP theme you can see. And you maybe heard about Jamstack pages. Jamstack pages are just HTML and JavaScript, which is no PHP at all. And they have this ability uh, with some frameworks in Jamstack, for example, to, um, to pass WordPress JSON files to install the uh, content of a WordPress into the gem stack. So you can, uh, can see there is the, there's one point. So I heard from some guys uh, five years ago on WordCamp Zurich. He spoke about the New York Times. The New York Times was making all, for all the journalists, they have a backend in WordPress. 
but the first page of the New York Times have to be so incredible fast they can't use WordPress there. Just uh, they just use the REST API on this case to um, to push the contents there and just uh, recompile the Gemstack page every time with the WordPress backend. It's uh, it's much faster because we don't have to uh, render any PHP. PHP is by luck a little bit faster than uh, a few years ago. I, I know some of you really had a problem, I think, because PHP 5.6 was very slow. Uh, Facebook, for example, was a social network on PHP, which was very slow as well. They uh, created some React component for the um, for their uh, overview, for their front end, to make it faster. But then PHP gets faster. So, and now the very interesting part is the WordPress also has now the same Facebook component in. All of you know that maybe it's this React. And WordPress forced Facebook to make it fully MIT uh, license. Um, they was able to do this. So they forced Facebook to make it full MIT license. Um, it was not that way uh, before. Also, the REST API is used for the uh, first WordPress app. If you are blogging on WordPress.com, you can see that you can uh, download in the App Store something, some app, which is called WordPress. And you can blog with it. It's not a. Um, it's all about the REST API because this app only communicates to the WordPress over this API, not uh, uh, um, at any other um, thing. So the app don't need any PHP in this case. Um, another assumption is that the REST API is there that they already have this Gutenberg React editor in mind since 2016. I believe so. This, uh, this editor came out in 2018, so say it, took, it took two years to have the REST API ready to get this React editor there up and running. And they have it before inside to, uh, to power the development of this. Um, the next thing is just an assumption. They want to push the boundaries of open data. So we heard before that they want to democratize, democratize publishing. So open data is really a democratizing of, op um, of publishing. Because if everybody can access every data everywhere, it's... Um, it's open data, and open data is very cool stuff in some cases for, for uh, researchers and something. So be aware, every WordPress is, if you don't do anything, is open data now. So you, um, you have to see that. It's a little bit scary, because when I first was aware of this, I, I thought, what the heck? I don't need the WordPress anymore. I can do everything with this data. So this is a little bit funny and also scary because it's all there in another representation of um, than your design. So design doesn't matter anymore in this case because it's all there as normal data. So why this is so important? Um, it helps WordPress content to be rendered everywhere. So apps, web, whatever else you can think. So if it is just a small display in a train, you can render WordPress content there. Why not? So this is um, important in this case because you can access it from everywhere, from every small machine. 
So a REST API is, in the, in, if you think in terms of Internet of Things, they are very small machines and they can access REST APIs and they literally need no data at all. So um, you can, in, an, in another way, you can connect WordPress to every other service which is also based on REST, which means that whatever you else, whatever else system you have there, you can connect it with your WordPress. For example, I worked in a company where we got a very, very old system where you um, have got events in there and to, the websites have to be WordPress because it has to be easy for the customers to fill content and something like this. But we needed a REST API for the old system that WordPress can consume that. And this is the... This is the thing, so the old system still is in, is in presence, but the WordPress can show the data from there. So WordPress is now able to interact with every API worldwide. So whatever you can imagine, if there is an API, you can include it in your WordPress. Whatever you can imagine, if there is an API, it can take data from your WordPress, and so on. So this, you have to keep this uh, in, in mind that this, this, this is the really big thing about this. So we are coming to the, to the part why it's the most secret weapon. Um, I already said something, but... Uh, the REST APIs are the most significant driver of economy. You don't believe it, but the, everything, what you see, what is working somewhere in the internet has got a REST API behind. If it is a delivery of a package, if it is a delivery of your food on, on lunch or something like this, there are thousands of REST APIs. If you take, take Uber or something like this, there are REST APIs with Google Maps and here is the Uber right now and it's going there and it's going there. So everything in the economy today is a REST API and the crazy part about this, nobody is aware of this and nobody is seeing this. So you can uh, just, if you type the, type the na type API somewhere, you will find a thousand of services just for free use, also paid use, whatever, which have an API today. So just Google that, then you can find a lot of. This, uh, this is the problem that VP REST API is in this case still completely underestimated because nobody, everybody is taking design and we have a Gutenberg editor and we make better designs with it and we start optimizing it with the React of the Gutenberg and everything else and so you never think about that you have this REST API there in place so why we can't use it for, good, for, better, for better. So you can integrate everything in, into WordPress, as I said, and you can provide everything with WordPress. You can take your WordPress also as an API provider. So your WordPress can be the application programming interface for the rest, or for something else. So um, you can think, whatever, if the customers need to know some special thing of an, um, what they have to consume over an API, you can create this API and they can uh, consume it from your website directly. So we're coming to the next slides. These are the, um, the important functions to know inside the WordPress. There are three, I, I have three functions right now in this slide. There's a VP remote get. There's a WordPress function used to send HTTP get requests to remote servers. It's like a, 
or some of you PHP developers know the file get contents. But this WordPress function is much faster than this. It's even faster than this cool one. Uh, in earlier days, we always need to use curl to uh, consume some data from some APIs. But WordPress now exactly has this uh, insight. So, and uh, um, the next one is the rep remote post. Everybody from you who knows a post request, we have to send some data with the post request also. And we can put it in WordPress directly with the VP remote post. So um, we can send something. And it's much, uh, you really have a much lesser, um, you have much lesser code in this case. Because if you use the WordPress functions, everything comes pre-built for the things you need to know. And you don't have to find out how can I send this thing to the server and what should I do to get some data from the server and something like this. This, is, uh, this was, a, was really uh, angry in earlier days. Now it's one, one command in the WordPress. And then the third point is the register rest route. Uh, I, I was really wondering, WordPress is using root and endpoint as the same word. So it's a function to use to create custom roots endpoints for the REST API in WordPress. So with the register REST root, you can create whatever you want from the REST, uh, from the WordPress WP WPJSON to consumed by uh, different people. And um, this is a real interesting point because you can have there whatever you want. On the reg register rest route, you can do whatever you want. You can register whatever you can imagine. Um, you can write one for baby names or something like this. So can have a rest route for, for to creating baby names in your WordPress. Nobody is seeing this as well, but you can have it there. Why, why not? So now uh, I, I have one special example use case. I just need to take a photo from you here, just to, that you can see what, what REST APIs are doing exactly. Um, As you can see, I didn't do anything with the photo right now. So we're coming back, to, we're coming to the next slide. Um, this, this photo is now sent to an API and it's tweeting that automatically and create a meme of it now with this, with this people. So um, I hope I hope it's already there. It's not very fast. I have to admit that it's not the fastest one. I can click the link. What? F <laughs> That's crazy. I have to leave this. So this is a old one. You don't see it? Oh. Yeah, crazy stuff. <laughs> there was a session before, so it's not, um, yeah. Somebody know where it is? It's here. So there was a session before. Now here we have it. It's, uh, um, it's exactly the photo from a few things. And all the things, like this one and this one. This is all done by APIs in the moment. So it's, I didn't put the text somewhere. And it's tweeting that as well from there. 
So if I go here to Twitter, there it is. So it just was one photo for the, um, and it's doing that instantly in uh, spreading it over the internet. <laughs> so that's a very crazy stuff about this. I need to find my, uh, here it is. I hope it works. Ah, where's the mouse? Here's the mouse. So, uh, yes, this, um, it was all spread by APIs from, um, I sent it to a Telegram server. You all know Telegram, somehow. Uh, WordPress told me once they use it for the internal messaging as well because uh, it's very fast with the bot API of the Telegram, so they can get all her the server errors directly over te Telegram. And what it's doing now, I take the photo, send it to Telegram. Telegram is sending it to WordPress, to the REST API, and the WordPress is sending it to another WordPress to make the text on the image. Then it goes back to my WordPress, tweets it, and this tweet is sending back to my API so that I can show it on a, uh, on a specific page. So I got this uh, address of the page inside uh, the slide, and the image was not there before. It just uh, spread it there from the, the so the tweet is uh, sending back his uh, ID to the WordPress, and another WordPress is taking it from the API of this WordPress where the tweet came from, and using the image. So it's um, very complicated in a, in a case, but you can imagine if you have interconnected systems like this, and you are a journalist or something like this, you can work really, really fast and imagine what it means for live events or something like this. In a live event, you always have some, uh, some problems with uh, maybe you're not fast enough, and some, uh, some uh, stations or something like this, you need to have a buffer for censoring content. So in this case, censoring content is not possible because it's going live directly in seconds. So um, this is, mm, I think it is, was it? So we are at the end of the slide. Um, I'm not sure, what's the time? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, any questions right now? Okay, there. Uh, hello. Uh, do you have any experience like practical experience with frameworks or themes that use uh, the focus on the WordPress API? Because in theory, the idea is to use WordPress as a decoupled CMS, like a headless CMS. And the technology seems cool, but in the reality, it's so complicated to create a website like with only APIs, and especially if you use uh, e-commerce, then you have problems with plugins, that something breaks, then, then, I mean, at the end, I go back on, always to the old ways of doing the websites, because how can, how can I convince my boss to use headless WordPress if he's going to make everything more complicated than before? Yeah, this is a very good question, thank you. Um, one, one thing I can, can tell you is that WordPress is in some cases way too slow. And this is the reason why we have to consume the uh, API. And there is one framework from Google, exactly, it's called Hugo. It's the Hugo CMS. And the Hugo can consume with, uh, with one little comment, can consume some JSON. 
but you need to compile it every time before you load it on the server. And you can put all the content into the WordPress, but the who can compile the, uh, the content again and put it on the web server. You can have, a, have an automated workflow for this, which means that uh, it's HTML at the end, if it's on the web server, which makes this thing so incredible fast that you never, never want to switch back to the old WordPress. Because today you, you have to have a little problem because Google is very sensitive if, it's, if the uh, site speed is too slow. So you need to find a way to go around the site speed which is caused by PHP and a lot of plugins. And so the Hugo is one of the things. There is one page from these, uh, from these Netly Fly guys. Netly Fly is a gem stack page. He also uh, created the term gem stack. And it's jamstack.org. There you can find a lot of frameworks which uh, just can consume WordPress with, with the JSON API. There's also another way on the jamstack.org uh, that you um, um, render the whole WordPress page as HTML again. And then it's also very fast. But it's not uh, recommended because it takes long. Um, yeah, there's a second question. Yes. What, did, did this answer your question? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, Maybe so... You can ask it again then. Sorry. So, could you characterize, describe again what is open by default in the, in the API, in WordPress, and also, the sub-question would be, what kind of mechanism are in place to decide what I want to leave open in the WPJSON API or what I will hide? What, how can I, let's say, manage exactly what I want to um, be pu public or not? Okay, yeah, this is a good question as well. It's open by default, I want to show this. I need to find the mouse. The mouse is always running somewhere. There is the mouse. So um, open by default means that we have um, uh, exactly that's the website I want to show. If you type behind your website here the WP minus JSON. Yeah, I didn't vote Jason. It's wrong. Everybody sees my everybody seeing my history right now. I mean, got this double name. <laughs> no, what what happened? He selected the whole Jason word. <laughs> Yay! Yes. So um, in this case, the Firefox has got a very special function to show JSONs somehow rendered. And this is what you see if you go to the WP minus JSON inside of Firefox. And uh, if you go now with command U, you can see it's a one line JSON file with a lot of information about your blog. The blog itself has no much, not much information, but there are some REST APIs you can find there. And now we can see this right here. There are, um, here is uh, written that is the WP minus JSON, and there are some things inside, like the IP hippo, the bullshit, the screenshot, the what is, the memes, the VP dark mode. Some of them are some plugins, some Ominous. And what you can see is uh, when you go here deep enough, you also have these standard WordPress functions like the OMBAT or the, oh yeah, a lot of APIs which are not meant to be public, but they are public. I hope they have API keys. If not, you can use them. 
Here we have the uh, WP version 2 post. And in this case, here's also, uh, also written what you have to put in there to see where you can get this post. And you can uh, access all your websites and all your posts from this from these one. Just Only the ones which are published, yeah, that's you some... Users on your web, on your WordPress, if you have users, I think only the... Should we give you the mic? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I actually didn't really work a lot with the REST API yeah. from WordPress so far, but what I figured out is only the posts that are published are publicly accessible. And I think also from the users, I tried to do like a users list, and it's only the users that published something like a post are publicly available, but I'm not completely sure about that. Yes, that's true partially because some plugins which are restricting content for only users are not doing it really right. So what, what happens is that sometimes in the WordPress REST API you find some data you don't want to be there. So you have to be some, sometimes very careful. There on the top is also a question. Uh, he was before you, but it doesn't matter. No, 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 if you have okay, a question. Okay, give it to him. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Um, my name is Alexandro Filipescu, and I will soon finish my master's in computer science at the University of Bern. Now, my question is, um, so you mentioned that Hugo is a CMS that basically by analyzing the WordPress web app manages to create routes to offer static pages for what, where do you don't need uh, to use any plugins. Uh, they get that in the right direction, so it uh, makes your web app run faster by just serving static content, right? Yes, this question is also very interesting. Uh, and I, now my question would be, instead of using this method, would it be a better idea to, for example, use a load balancer and, for, and have two servers that run WordPress with the same data? Um, would that, wouldn't be that a better solution? Or, because then you can have multiple instances that if a, and if a server is stressed, you can go to the other one. Would that be... Wouldn't that be more reliable? That's my question. This, this according to your use case, if you have to be really, really fast, it would be a better idea to serve all over the REST API. Because in this case, you can do whatever you want there and send it to whatever system you want. And so if you consult the REST API, you're, you're very, very, very fast. But if you are not... Um, not aware of how to use it, or you just need a small website for your small business. Yes. There's a very, uh, very um, expansive solution, of course, because you have to uh, have to uh, put in a, a lot of brain power okay. to get it for your use case right. Um, that's that's the reason why it is uh, why WordPress developers sometimes very paid paid very good as they know that so if you need a job change and you want to boost your career try to learn this and uh, I can Thank guarantee you. you you are paid one number more in your yearly <laughs> wage okay now here I, I hope it answered your question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Somehow. Uh, yeah, like uh, imagine having a car and making your gas tank larger so you can drive faster and instead you can just make engine consume less fuel. Wouldn't it be a better idea to just Sweet. make better engine than la larger tank? Like, this is the way at some point you will end up with five million servers just to handle the same traffic which you would handle basically by creating better application. 
So that's the idea. Uh, my question, I will actually just, uh, this is a request more than a question, but I will turn it into a question. Uh, what are your tips? Because uh, you've been talking about functions which are used to communicate with the API. Uh, what I think is very important is the security of the API. It's like you cannot talk about it, uh, about the REST API without thinking about, uh, talking about security. And the uh, most important thing people ask about what's open by default. A funny thing, you cannot check it only once. Imagine if you install, uh, I, I don't want to use trivial, the, the word trivial, but just install uh, WooCommerce on your site. And basically, you are able to break some country's law by basically exposing data through WordPress API by installing the plugin. That's all you do, and you already broke the law. Uh, because, yeah, at, at some point, I'm not sure about now, but at some point you're able to see all the customers' details uh, who made the purchase on your website through WooCommerce. You're able to see the details of your customers, just like that. Uh, so keep that in mind. Registering new endpoints, uh, seeing the, the, the API like through the, through the URL, uh, it's cool, but instead of focusing on uh, creating new ones, Better think about removing the ones which you don't want to show. That's the so to turn it into a question. What are your tips to make WordPress API more secure? Thank you very much. So it's according to your use case again, but the best case would be if you don't need it to close it at all. Because if you don't want to have it there on this on this particular website then you have to close it because then you can, for 100% sure, it's not exposed somehow. But if you're using WooCommerce, it's a good example, and you close the REST API, then good luck with all of You are not able to receive the products, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, somehow, uh, it's somehow like a circular problem. So closing, maybe break something inside the WordPress, leave it open, maybe break the law because you're uh, exposing data you don't want to expose. And um, there, is a, there is a good uh, example from the, from the government. You're on, on noted page. Uh, okay, it's too complicated. Uh, it takes too long to type it in. If you, if you go to a web page from the government like bag-coronavirus.ch and type in slash wp minus json, it's closed completely. Um, because if it is there, everybody else could use the contents from there. So, um, yes, you have, a, you have a problem if you close it completely and also if you leave it open. In best case, you can uh, hide the endpoints, which means nobody can find out anything about the endpoints. So that's very easy to do. There's one part of code that you hide the endpoints, so you can leave the WordPress open to work properly, but the endpoints are hidden, and nobody else can see what happens there. That's one approach to get uh, get there, to hide them, just to hide them, to don't break anything. <laughs> okay, there's another question. Uh, we have time for two more questions. Okay, two more. No, not really a question, more just uh, I would like to add on to that statement from before. Um, mostly what you can do is just uh, close the API and only let it open for logged in users, which mostly doesn't break the website and still makes everything work normally for logged in users, so like the Gutenberg editor and all of that stuff will still work, but other users who aren't logged in will not be able to access your endpoints. It's, it's very interesting because you have to show me how you want to rest a stateless, that means to be logged in is somehow some creepy thing sometimes. There are some plugins which allows it because at the end of the day, it still sends your login cookie when you do a request yeah. with WordPress, yeah, so you can true. just do it like any other web page. Yeah, it's technically not really per standard, but it works. Yeah, it's possible. You have an application password inside WordPress for users, 
which also is using uh, can be work for some users. But if you are logged in and you have this JSON, um, I expose a lot of uh, networks, social networks, as logged in WordPress user with the ex, uh, with the application password, I can do everything over the REST API. So this also sometimes a little bit dangerous. So last question. Uh, hi, it's not uh, really a question. I use um, WordPress REST API to manage uh, Learn Dash. Uh, it's a learning uh, plugin in WordPress and uh, in CRM, and then I use uh, application password. Then I, uh, when I send a request, this request is a notification. Then I can get user login and email, and uh, that's the security. Uh, not only my this endpoint is only open for um, with authentication with uh, application password. You can uh, use it in uh, in WordPress. You go to user admin and you add the application password. Yeah, if it works, it's okay. But sometimes it does not work for every plugin out there. <laughs> so you have mm -hmm. to see what what your pl plugin is doing. Yeah. If you are aware of VP scan, it's very much scanning the REST API also to find out a lot of things. So then we are finished, I think. Thank you for having me here. I hope you find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs>